Batik is the work of the Indonesian people, which is a blend of art and technology by the ancestors of the Indonesian nation. Indonesian batik can develop to an incomparable level, both in design or motif and process. Batik patterns that contain meaning and philosophy will continue to be explored from various customs and cultures that develop in Indonesia. The batik motifs include animal, human, geometric, and other motifs. Batik motifs are often used to show someone's status. Batik is a hereditary tradition, therefore, often, batik motifs are the hallmark of batik produced by certain families. Several factors that influence the birth of batik motifs include geographical location, for example, in coastal areas will produce batik with motifs related to the sea, as well as those who live in the mountains will be inspired by the natural surroundings. Here we show some motifs including alas alasan, angur, and amprit. Although the art form for, of batik is very intricate, the tools that are used are still very simple. The chanting, believed to be a purely Jap Japanese invention, is a small thin wall spouted copper container, sometimes called a wax pen, that is connected to a short bamboo handle. Normally, it is approximately 11 centimeters in length. The copper container is filled with melted wax and the artisan then uses the chanting to draw the design on the cloth. Chanting have different sizes of spouts, numbered to correspond to the size, to achieve varied design effects. The spout can vary from 1mm in diameter for very fine detailed work to wider spouts used to fill in large design areas. Dots and parallel lines may be drawn with chanting that have up to 9 spouts. Sometimes a wad of cotton is fastened over the mouth of the chanting or attached to a stick that acts as a brush to fill in very large areas. Different kinds and qualities of wax are used in batik. Common waxes used for batik consist of a mixture of beeswax used for its malleability and paraffin used for its friability. Resins can be added to increase adhesiveness and animal fats create greater liquidity. The wax must be kept at the proper temperature. A wax that is too cool will clog the spout of the chanting. A wax that is too hot will flow too quickly and be uncontrollable. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everyone. My name is Javid. I represent my world at Tria Mandala Museum for Kazafati Zaka and Zaki. Thank you all for listening. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Satria Mandala Museum is a military museum of the armed forces of Indonesia displaying a huge collection of military weapons, vehicles, dioramas, uniforms, attributes, photos, statues, and other artifacts from 1940s at, until now. It's located on Jalan Jenderal Gatot Subroto No. 14, Kuningan, South Jakarta, and sits on 5.6 hectares of land. Satria Mandala Museum was built on November 15, 1971 led by Brigadier General Nugroho Noto Susanto. He was the first head of the Indonesian Armed Force History Center. The museum was inaugurated on October 5, 1972, by Suharto, the president of Indonesia at that time. Then the construction of the museum continued until 1979. This museum building was pre previously known as Wisma Yaso, which was the residence of President Sukarno's fifth wife who came from Japan. Her name was Ratnasari Dewi Sukarno. The name of Satria Mandala came from Sanskrit, which means the sacred place of the night. In January 2010, the Satria Mandala Museum was declared as a cultural property of Indonesia. The museum consists of three main buildings. First is Satria Mandala Building, two is Prabawisesa Waspada Building, and the last is Perjuangan Bangsa Building. Entering the Satria Mandala Building, we will see writings and replicas of the 
proclamation text of Indonesia, the logos and flags of each of the armed forces institution in Indonesia, including the ABRI, Air Force, Army, Navy, and Polri. On the first floor, various dioramas about the battle of the Indonesian people in achieving independence against the colonizer are present. There are also the personal collection of General Sudirman, General Ahmad Haris Nasution, General Soharto, and Lieutenant General Orip Somo Harjo. The collection items include <coughs> a stretcher and a bag belonging to General Sudirman, carries belonging to Lieutenant General Orip Sumo Harjo, books of General Soharto, and the commander's uniform worn by General Sudirman, General Ahmad Haris Nasution, and General Soharto. In a southern area, there are many military attributes, banners, uniforms, and the symbol of TNI as well, as photos of the TNI's battle in Indonesia. On the level ground floor, there are many collections of weapons used by the TNI, such as rifles, swords, bamboo spears, mortars, missiles, rockets, artillery, mines, cannons, miniature combat vehicles, and many more. The Pembawi Sesawas pada building and perjuangan bangsa building also have a lot of collection of dioramas. The Waspada Purba Wisasa Building, which was built in 1987, focuses more on the event of the TNI together with the people inviting the DTII in West Java, Central Java, Aceh, South Kalimantan, and South Sulawesi in the 1960s. Totally, this museum has approximately 74 collection of dioramas. Outside the museum building, there are open space areas that also function as outdoor showroom. And there is also a garden area that can be used for family picnics. This outdoor showroom area are located in the Dirgantara Park, Soekarno Park, and Sudirman Plaza, which exhibit RE-001 aircraft, P-51 Mustang aircraft, warships, helicopters, cannons, tanks, panzers, and BRDM. Meanwhile, the Satria Mandala Historical Park can be enjoyed by visitor for picnic activities. The museum has several facilities that can be used by visitors, including a mosque, dining and picnic area, children's reading park, souvenir kiosk, and a large parking lot. The Satria Mandala Museum is open for public from Tuesday to Sunday at 9 a.m. until 9 p.m., while Mondays and national holidays are closed. Visitors are charged an entrance ticket for Rp5,000 per person. By visiting the Satria Manila Museum, we are able to add our insight into the history of the NE. Besides that, it can be an alternative recreational place that is quite interesting to visit.